Hi everyone. We will be continuing our PLC learning series looking at Program Cyclic Scan. Now Programmable Logic Controllers or PLCs use a cyclic scan. The time it takes to complete one scan is called the scan time. Typical scan times range from 10 milliseconds to 10 microseconds. This translates from 0.01 to 0.0001 seconds per PLC scan. Understanding how the program scan will help us in programming and troubleshooting the PLC. Now the simplest scan cycle of a PLC consists of four steps. Read inputs, execute program, diagnostic communications, and update outputs. And again, this continuously cycles through. That's why we call it a cyclic scan. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start your video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So PLC scan, read inputs. Now all of the physical uh, PLC inputs are read at least once during each scan. The status of these inputs can be then be used in the ladder logic program code. Depending on the controller used, an immediate update can be used if the condition of the input changes within that program scan and you need to, to uh, uh, see it. This here, because it come from the BRICS PLC, uh, it's a do more uh, model. And you can see here that we do immediate discrete input. So this gets the status of that input if we need it within that scan. Now, the um, once we know the, the status of the inputs, we can now execute our program. And the program execution is our next part of our PLC scan. And the PLC program consists of a set of instructions that are to be implemented for the industrial real-time application. Outputs are controlled based on the input conditions. Now, ladder logic is the most common method for programming a PLC. The graphical language comprises of a series of rungs. They form to look like a ladder. Inputs are on the left side of the rung and outputs are on the right side. If an con input condition or conditions are true, then the outputs of the rung are true. If the input logic is false, then the outputs will be false. Logical controllers can be started or can be uh, stated in a number of different terms um, and logical conditions, I mean. So we can have a true or false, we can have a one or zero, we can have an on off. All of these terms are interchangeable when referring to the logic on PLC rungs. So the symbols used on the ladder rungs here are contacts and coils. They're closely related to the electrical schematics that are used by electricians, technicians, and others with electrical backgrounds. This makes it easier for many people to read and understand the logic when troubleshooting or developing the logic. Now, if we look at the actual PLC itself we have here, and we'll go to monitor, we can see that um, this is my input condition here. And if we call up our data view, we can actually then determine this is a simulation of our Proactivity 2000 controller. If you notice that this is my input card, my output card, and my analog in and out. So here I have the first contact, which represents the, the first light on my input. If it physically is on, then my normally open contact is on. And when it physically is off, then that contact is off for logical faults. And similarly, if I look at my normally closed contact, when I have nothing on my input, so no voltage or signal coming into that input and it's off, then my logic on the normally closed will keep it on. And if I turn it um, off, then the logic will then have it or turn it on, then the logic will then turn it off. So it's just the opposite of what physically is coming in for the normally closed. Now, your PLC will normally solve logic um, from left to right, top to bottom. So it constantly does this all the time. So 
Again, we go from left to right, top to bottom, and the output is immediately available for the next rung to then use. And then outputs is normally used only once in your PLC logic. So in my example here, let's, uh, let's stop this. Let's put it in debug mode. And you can see here, and then we'll go through and step through. You see, here's my logic here. And I have two outputs, one here, which is the sa exact same as this one. So when we scan or go through our logic of our program, we can see that if I turn on this first input, the input condition is true. I will step through that. And once I go to the next rung, you can see that it turns on that output within that scan. Now we're talking within the scan itself. On my next input, I do not have, I have this one on, so this turns that on. So if I scan this logic, it will set that output as off. Single step, and it is exactly what it does. Now my last rung here, my third rung, is number three. So again, I'm using a normally open, so it's actually off right now. So it again, will set the same output off. So if I step through that, it goes off. Then when we get to the end of the scan, it does all of this other stuff and, and updates the I.O. So what you'll see is that when I have two outputs, it's always the last output that gets um, triggered. So, so sometimes when you're troubleshooting PLC logic, moving a rung to the end of the program will make it function. You can then look for duplicate outputs in your ladder logic code. Now, one of the next steps is the diagnostics and communications as part of that PLC scan. And the PLC is an industrial computer. Computers are prone to failure, so this must be prevented. Diagnostics ensure that the memory and hardware are correct and functional, functioning correctly every scan of the controller. If not, then warnings or errors are then activated. Refer to your PLC unit for the exact notifications that are given. Programming or monitoring your PLC is done through communications. Communication can also mean with remote or local I.O., network, etc. The scan will include a portion of to handle all of these transactions. Now the, out, the PLC scan update outputs. Now all of the physical PLC outputs are written at least once during each scan. The outputs are determined by the ladder logic program code. So once we've done through the code, it take, and we hit the end statement, then the output logic gets updated. And depending on the controller used, an immediate output can be used to change the physical output within the program scan. Now again, here's an example of the Bricks PLC, and it has an out I, which is out immediately. So during that scan, when this is energized, it actually will send that output immediately to the physical I.O. Now, just a couple of notes to take in. If we look um, at older Modicon PLCs like the 984, the scan will actually be different from normal PLC scan. And it will scan the logic from top to bottom, left to right, instead of from left to right, top to bottom. This would change the logical troubleshooting that you do when you energize or look at this controller. And all of the, everything that we've talked about so far will use a synchronous PLC scan. Controllers like Allen Bradley Compact Logic uh, using the RS Logics 5000 software use asynchronous IO scan. This means that updating of IO will happen whenever it can. In asynchronous IO scan, you typically will only use the actual IO reference once in your program. And most programmers of these systems will transfer the IO to internal memory first, then they will use the internal memory in the program code. This will now act as a synchronous predictable scan as we've talked about. So in our sample here, what we can do is continuously run um, this logic and you can see that three on our output is the one that overrides whatever one is doing. So that's the only time that the output actually turns on. And it doesn't really matter what one does. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.